The section we have now arrived at deals with submarine cables and pipelines. Submarine power cables are equipped with steel wire armour which ordinary ground cables do not have. This armour is designed to protect the cable from rupture in deep water. These cables are simply so heavy that without this steel armour they would collapse under their own weight. The photo on the back wall was taken at Gessa on Denmark's southeastern tip and dates from the establishment of the Contact Cable Link which runs from Bjørskov here in eastern Denmark to near Rostock in northern Germany. The Contact Link is a combination of ground cable and submarine cable. We have a number of sections of submarine pipe and these can be seen inside the display case. But just outside the case is a small piece of pipe which we prize very highly among our exhibits. Known as the Iceland pipe, this is a piece of the world's first flexible water pipeline. The story goes that a volcanic eruption in Iceland had contaminated surface water in the country's Vestman Islands with sulphur. This rendered the water unusable both for the fishing industry and for domestic purposes, a most unfortunate situation. However, the Icelandic authorities contacted NKT to ask whether a pair of pipelines could be manufactured to provide water to the islands. While I naturally don't know precisely what NKT said, the situation was not one with which the company had had previous experience. NKT had at that time a large production division at Reifshelöen, Copenhagen. This division employed an engineer by the name of Vestpol, and he it was who conceived what in hindsight was an obvious idea. We'll construct a submarine cable, leave out the screen, conductors, filler and sheath, line it with polyethylene, and there we have our pipeline. Of course, while this idea was indeed very simple, it still needed someone to conceive it, and that was Vespo. Two pipelines were duly installed from the Iceland coast to the Vestman Islands, and everyone was happy. The ship we have a model of here has been NKT's cable laying craft for many, many years. It is now in the ownership of a diving company in Jutland, but NKT charters it if cable repairs are needed. Originally named Esso Copenhagen, the ship came off second best in an encounter with a stray World War II mine, sustaining severe damage. It was set to be scrapped, but NKT acquired it and converted it into a cable layer. On the map of the world, we can see many of the places visited by the ship. These include places as far removed as Guadeloupe, Thailand, the North Sea, West Africa and the Mediterranean, as well as many more that are not shown on this map. On one occasion, the ship visited the Mediterranean for an NKT project to install water pipelines from the Italian coast to Capri. The islanders used to use rainwater supplemented by water shipped in by tanker. With increasing water consumption and growing tourism, this situation was no longer tenable, and transporting water to the island was also very expensive. After many trials and tribulations, NKT was eventually awarded a contract to lay three water pipelines from the Italian coast to Capri. Despite many obstacles placed in its way, the company duly installed the pipelines and the project was satisfactorily concluded. The ship was recalled to Denmark and everything was as it should be. Pipeline manufacture was to lead to the establishment of the company now known as NKT Flexibles which supplies subsea pipelines for the offshore oil and gas industry and for carrying effluent and chemicals and so on. The pipes are manufactured in Denmark at a very large production plant in Kalimborg.